like to talk about the future, 50 years into the future, 100 years into the future, 1,000 years into the future, 100,000 years into the future, a million years into the future. Uh, so let's start in the past. July 20th, 356 BC. We're in a dark hall, a giant temple. Enormous columns rise up, hidden in the darkness. A space perhaps like this one, much larger though. And walking along, we see a young man holding a torch. Flames flicker from its end. His name is Herostratus. And as he passes the drapes, he places the torch against the curtains, and the flames leap from his stick and start walking up the drapes. Outside, a little while later, the Temple of Artemis in Ephesus, one of the greatest structures ever built by human hands, one of the seven ancient wonders of the world, considered by most to be greater than the pyramids of Giza, more beautiful than the hanging gardens of Babylon, are in flame, a conflagration that lights the city for miles around in an orange glow. And this young man, Heriostratus, a poet, stands outside, places his arms up, and basically says, I did this. This young poet, with a certain gleam in his eye, wanted to live forever. He wanted to be an immortal, and this is what he told the citizens as they basically lynched him that night. An edict was put out. We should thwart this young man's ambition. From this moment on, anyone who breathes his name will be executed. And so they hoped that I today would not be able to tell you his name. Unfortunately for history, that same night, on the other side of the ocean, on the other side of the Mediterranean, in Macedonia, a young boy was born, Alexander the Great. And if it wasn't for this coincidence of history, we wouldn't necessarily know Herostratus' name. Now, Alexander the Great was one of the first immortals. Before he died, before the average age of which most ancient Greeks died, he had conquered the entire human world. Remember at that time in ancient Greece, say around 5th century BC in Athens, the average male lived for 35 years. What can you do in 35 years? I mean, that number has a lot to do with infant mortality, disease, war, things that seem to be on the surface level absent from the United Kingdom today where the average life expectancy is 79.9 years, as I was informed by Google a couple of minutes ago. The economy in ancient Athens was quite different to the economy of today. There was no such thing as growth. This is a word we've heard a couple of times this evening. For I to become rich, someone else would have to become impoverished. Capitalism was a zero-sum game. It was a bit like Monopoly when all the money is out of the bank and it basically starts to accumulate at one side of the table. You can't create new capital. Whereas today, in a sense, we can. About 20 or 30 years ago, there was a lot of concern about the explosion, the population explosion happening in the developing world. How are we going to feed all these people? Will we need genetically modified crops? But something quite remarkable is happening. In the East Asian economies, the middle classes are growing at a rate 100 times that which we experienced, for example, in Sheffield. It took 200 years for the Industrial Revolution to create a universal working class. Now, I'm not saying this is necessarily a good thing, but one of the things that is happening is that the middle classes don't have that many children. For them, simply being alive is enough. Why is it that we like to have children? Inside each of us, inside every cell, is a strand of DNA. This is the message that we pass on in our children. We pass on a code. It may not contain everything that we've learned, our hopes, our ambitions, our dreams, but it contains, in a sense, the essence of us, 
an essence that is very quickly diluted as it slips and slides and merges with other strands of DNA. This very DNA which creates life is the very thing that destroys life. Every time a cell in your body divides itself, the very, at the very end is what in computer speak might refer to as buffer, a couple of digits that have no purpose. And every time that your cell divides, a little bit of those digits are left behind. Inside many of us, unfortunately tonight, are human cells that are also immortal. The cancer cell is an immortal cell. Left to its own devices, it will live for eternity. It seems quite probable that when, and I say when rather than if, when we unlock the secret of cancer, we will also unlock the secret of immortality. This could happen 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 50 years from now, 100 years from now, but it is coming. As surely as Moore's law declares that transistor chips will reduce in size exponentially, so it seems quite inevitable that human beings will finally be able to tinker with themselves and stop becoming human beings. I would say that mankind as individuals are willfully ignorant, vindictive, hateful, apathetic, and generally quite loathsome. Yet, mankind in general has created some of the most miraculous things. More miraculous, I think, than anything created by a divine hand. These capricious beings have blessed us with things like Twelfth Night, or Die Zauberflaute, The Odyssey, Don Quixote, Paradise Lost, the third season of Seinfeld. Things I think that could last millennia. What is it that motivates us in our labor to strive so hard, to strive against each other, to compete against each other, to be so violent and vindictive and yet also out of violent vindictive emotions creates such amazing things. I think it is a desire to become immortal, a desire to leave a trace of us behind. We are now aware that the lifespan of the universe is absolutely incomprehensible. We used to think that the Earth was 6,000 years old and then maybe a couple of hundred thousand years old. And now, if we really look up above the skies of Sheffield, we realize that Everything we do is so vain that it has no significance. And so perhaps we labor to try and leave a trace behind. Imagine having the time to sit down and to watch a stream for a hundred years. Imagine sitting down to watch a waterfall carve itself up a mountain. Imagine deciding that you will get on that rocket ship and that you will travel to the next star, to the star beyond it, that you will give mankind a hundred thousand years, a million years, and that perhaps these rather insignificant human beings could somehow, now detached from time itself, finally engage with the cosmos. the ball.